What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Auto Guy DIY coming at you on another beautiful Sunday. So it's Memorial Weekend, so happy Memorial Day to everybody. I'm hoping y'all have a good weekend. And that's about all I got on that. So today we're gonna talk about cooling systems. It's getting hot outside. A cooling system is a vital part of your engine running efficient. Had to get that out right. So I'm gonna show you what I got. I pulled my radiator cap off and look at that brown stuff that's on there. So that don't look very nice. So I figure that's probably running through the engine, running through the radiator. So I'm gonna break the water hose out. We're gonna pull some hoses off. We're gonna run some water through it. We're gonna flush it out real well. I'm gonna take y'all through the process. All right, man, we're out here at the truck. So I got my hose stretched out here. Now I clean my radiator cap up. I inspected it. Got to make sure the rubber's good here and here. If that thing doesn't seal or work properly, make sure your spring's in good condition by pushing on it like that. That it'll still work because that simple little radiator cap will make your car overheat. So look down in this radiator. You can see all that gunk in there. So I took my lower radiator hose off here, right? And I left my thermostat in here. So we're just going to flush out the radiator right now. And then we'll get into putting the lower radiator, or not even putting the lower radiator hose back on, but we'll take the thermostat out, and then we can run the hose through our thermostat housing and through the engine, which will run it through the heater core, and we should be able to rinse all this stuff out. So this process will work the same on the third gen, pretty much on any car, as long as you can get to that lower radiator hose and take it off. And it is good maintenance to do that because this right here, is not acceptable i mean i took my upper radiator hose off the best way to rinse your radiator is put your hose your water hose and your upper radiator hose put your radiator cap back on so it'll go it'll flow all the way through your radiator rinse it out the bottom but i wanted to show you look at this water coming out of here man this is terrible look at this look at how it, look at the ground down there look out look at this right here I mean, that's terrible. That's why we're rinsing this thing. That's why we're flushing it. So I got that water hose just crammed in there with it on. It fits in there pretty good in that upper spout. You can see it running out down here on the lower radiator hose uh, outlet. So I'm just gonna let it run for about five minutes, make sure everything's good and clear water coming out. And then we'll pull this thermostat out right here and we'll do the same to the engine block. This is another way you can tell it's clear. You take your hand, cover your lower radiator outlet, pull your thermostat housing, uh, thermostat, uh, damn, my radiator cap off, and watch. See, that's clear water coming out of there. So you know you've rinsed that radiator completely out. So at that point, pinch off your hose, pull it out of your upper radiator socket. Now we'll pull that thermostat out and we'll get right into that part of it. So to remove this thermostat, man, it's two 13 millimeter bolts you don't have to take your upper radiator hose off unless you just want it out of the way so like i said it's two 13 mil bolts always take your bottom one off first so you ain't got to fight it with that thermostat with that housing moving like that i mean that's just the simplest thing i mean it's as easy as that you can already see where the thermostat's at right there we're gonna stick the hose down in there and flush the rest of the engine out so I got it off. Look at this thing, man. Look at this nasty stuff in here. I'm 100% sure that's contributing to my cooling problems in this truck. So I got to grab a flat blade, pop this out. I'm probably going to end up going and buying another thermostat. That thing looks terrible. I'm going to show you all this thermostat real quick. Look at that stuff on there, man. It's all over there. That's why it's important to flush out your system. Look down inside this housing. Here, let me see if I can get this camera closer. It's ridiculous. It's almost embarrassing, but I've never done this. So obviously the person that had this truck before me did not take very good care of it. So here I am having to do it myself. All right, man. So I cleaned this thermostat off pretty good. Now I do believe that that stuff on there would probably change the temperature rating of the thermostat. I'm not really sure. So I'm gonna prove myself either right or wrong. I'm gonna clean this one up a little bit more I'm going to put it back in the truck, throw some water, some antifreeze in there, drive it around for the rest of the weekend, see how it does. If not, we'll get into a thermostat replacement, and that'll be that. Now, the water that was coming out was really brown and nasty, 
So it was a good thing I did that. Now let me show you what I did. We'll walk back out here to the truck real quick. <laughs> so what I did was I stuck that water hose right on that hole there and let it run out the lower radiator hose. Up in this one, it just kind of goes in there and then down in that one a little bit. There goes your heater core. I just kind of made sure it ran out. Made sure all that water coming out of that radiator, radiator hose was clean. So we're going to put it all back together, fill it up, fire it up, and see what we got. One more quick tip for this thermostat. When you replace it, your bleeder valve. I know you can see that bleeder valve right there, that little jiggly pin. Always face it up. You want it to face up in the housing, right? So this is how you want your thermostat to sit in there. See that little jiggle pin, that little bleeder pin? Let me get you down here. See that little pin right there? See how it's on the top? You want that, it's a bleeder. That's to help bleed it. Your air pockets come out of the top, you can get everything good and full. So that's just a little quick tip. You wanna always make sure your little jiggly or bleeder valve is at the top of your thermostat when installed. And another quick tip, check your housing. Right, mine look pretty rough. Just get you a little old, well, Get you a little old wire brush, scuff it up, wipe it off real good, wipe the inside of it out, and then go to town. But you want to make sure you have a good seal because that O-ring on your thermostat is what seals your housing. There is no gasket. So that's how you flush out your cooling system. It's that simple, man. That's the complete thing. That's the radiator, the engine block. I didn't disconnect the heater core, so that ran clean water through the heater core. And that's what's up, man. It's a very vital... Um, thing to do for maintenance at least once a year flush it out it'll keep your car running better so before i let y'all get out of here i wanted to show you man i was looking at the water that came out of the truck let me walk y'all back out here and show y'all what came out of that engine block in that radiator so as you can see right here there's nothing in this but when you get to where that was running out of the truck look at all that stuff that's in there man that's terrible so I'm 100% sure that that's the reason why I was having some cooling problem. I know that my backup fan don't come on. I'm still working on that. There's something not communicating with it. But for the most part, that's how you do your cooling system or you flush your cooling system on your rams or mostly any vehicle plus a couple of thermostat tips. So boom, and that's what's up. So this is Auto Guy DIY. Keep living the dream, doing your thing, like and subscribe always leave me a comment and i'm rolling out <laughs>